Oh, thank you, Bryce. Thank you. Yeah, I've been uh, I've now been teaching online. I think it's ten years this year. Quite crazy, eh? Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> All right, let's get the let's get this class started. I'm really excited to to paint this painting. Hello and welcome to the class today. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be painting this beautiful uh, butterfly and flower scene. I'm really looking forward to it. I did it in, in pencil uh, a few years back. So if you want to go and uh, take a look at that, the link is below. Um, go and look on my website. It is available there. It was great fun to draw. Now I'm really looking forward to painting it. So if you do want to work with, there is a a PDF with all the, the reference photos and the sketch outline and so on. Um, you do need to be a patron, unfortunately. So go and take a look at the link below. It's quite affordable. And then you can go and download that. If you don't, then just uh, sketch out the sketch out as best as you can. I'm working on a 12 by 16 inch canvas today. So a nice small, uh, it should be a, a nice small quick painting. Famous last words, eh? Now, so if you're in the live class, just bear with me. I have four cameras here in the studio that I work with. So at times I like to zoom in and out to make sure that you get the best view. So that does take a few seconds. So just bear with me as I do that every now and again. All right, let's go over to the canvas and take a look and see what is, what's what. All right, so I've, I've printed out my full-size tile template on that 12 by 16 inch size so 12 by 16 inches if you don't work in inches is 40 by 30 centimeters so i, I like to have that full size reference because it makes it easier to to judge and i usually just put that here above my above my canvas or i stick it up on the wall in front of me and then this is the the sketch outline so you can see i've just just sketch the basics sketch the um the butterfly and the the outlines of the petals and then one or two just direction lines inside these petals so that you can get a feel for how they curve around while you're painting Alrighty, so that's what it looks like when it's sketched out. So what I've done is I've taken my, um, my my sketch outline, and then this is dressmaker's carbon paper. So you can you get this at the at the material shops. So it comes in a pack of three or four different colours. So we're working with oranges. So my closest colour to that is red. Obviously, if you don't have the dressmaker's carbon paper, just use regular carbon paper all righty so obviously the first thing we need to do is get some uh, some paints mixed so let's head over to the palette Actually, no, you know what? I think let's go back. Let's go back to this wide view. Because we haven't done any planning yet. Can't paint a painting we haven't done any planning yet. Alright, so I want this to be a nice, easy beginner painting. So we're going to simplify the background. But now because we're painting in oils, Normally, you're going to paint the background first and then all the objects in front of it, right? So you're going to paint the background and then this flower and then the butterfly and then that flower and then this flower because he is overlapping that one, right? Um, but because we're painting in oil and we're going to simplify this, we're not going to do all this detail in the background. We're going to keep our background pretty much just a plain color. Maybe with a, a touch of shading in it. We'll see how much time is left. But I, I want to keep it nice and plain so that we can concentrate on getting these petals and, and, the, and the butterfly shaded in. And that way we'll leave it as a, as a, 
more of a beginner painting. So today I'm going to do this, and then this, and then if there's time left, I'll paint that one, because that's a repetition of that. So if, uh, if we, we do run out of time, then at least we've you'll know how to continue that on your own, and then we'll do the background in afterwards. It's one of the few times when we can get away with doing the background second, because everything here has got super crisp edges. Can you see that? There's no real lost lines or... or soft edges there's probably about our softest edge which is fine we can put in the background and just gently soften that up so we can get away with it today all right now let's go over to that palette and get some colors mixed so having said that we're not going to bother too much With mixing colors for the background I think we'll go straight over to mixing colors for the flowers and the butterfly so it's quite unusual that you've got the butterfly and the flowers of the same color right eh? so if you want to mix it up you're welcome to change that butterfly into say a, a monarch or something like that For simplicity's sake, I'm going to just keep it all the same colors. It saves us some color mixing, eh? <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm going to start with just some uh, titanium white. You always need white. So we'll put a, a decent dollop of that down. And it's nice vibrant color, so we can use quite, quite intense colors probably straight out the tube so there's definitely some cadmium yellow there right if you look at the the flower and the lighter bits on the on the butterfly and there's definitely some cadmium orange there in the darker bits as that petal curls under so let's get some cadmium orange there and then if i look at that bottom right hand leaf it's quite dull hey it's quite a dull color and it's got a bit of a greeny tinge to it as well so it's quite yellow ochre it's quite greeny so let's see maybe we do put a bit of yellow ochre down Oh, there's a lot of uh, oil in that in that tube so if that does happen to you when you squeeze it out and there's just a ton of oil you've got two options you can either just uh, take a, a piece of kitchen towel or something like that some paper towel and just soak up that excess oil all that's happened is your the oil has separated inside the tube so some of that oil that was in here is now just lying at the top. It's quite normal. There's nothing wrong with the paint. It's not old or anything like that. It does. Some paints do separate. So you can either just soak it up like this. Or you can mix it into the paint. So today I've just got that tiny blob. So if I mix all that oil in there, it's going to become just too, too loose, too runny. So I'll, I'll soak up that excess oil there. And then obviously we've got some greens for for those stems and things. So we can put down a little bit of sap green for now. Alright, so we won't bother with anything for the background for now. Those colors should should get us started. Let's see, let's do that. And maybe we can go over to. Let's go to that camera over there. I 
I mean, I just want to bring up the the palette as well. Then you can see what the uh, There we go, like that. Then you can see what colors I'm using. And so when I start, I always start with my paint as as thick as I can handle it. Obviously, it, it still needs to flow. So if it is really thick, like for example, your white. White is famous for being super thick when it comes out the, out the tube. So I do like to just add a touch of medium into it. So that serves two purposes. It, it makes sure that the paint flows nicely off the brush. But the medium also has a drying agent in it. So instead of your painting taking a week, three or four to dry, now it will dry in a, in a day or two. Right, so that central bit of the butterfly. So I'm looking now past all the brown details. We're first going to get just that basic yellowy shading in. And then we'll add all the details in. So that's definitely yellow. So let's take yellow and maybe just a drop of medium in there for now. And then I'll wipe off the excess paint off the brush. And let's get a bit of white into that. And let's see, what does that color look like? So what I'm going to do now is I, I mix that paint like that. Now I've got some of this paint on the brush. And now I'm going to hold on the brush, on the knife. So now I'm going to hold the knife up to my computer screen, because I always reference from the computer screen. And I hold it in the place that I'm mixing. So in this case, I'm mixing that color there, looking past all the details, all the brown details. Look at the, the yellow of that wing. So I'm looking over there, and I'm comparing. Is that the color that I see on the screen or not? It's getting there. It just needs to be lighter. So I'll do that. And then I'll check it again. And once I'm happy, then it's great. Then I'll continue on to the, to the next color. So it is a variation of yellow. So I'm going to take this. Let's maybe leave that there for a second. So now against the screen, I'm going to hold it to the next place that I'm mixing. So I'm now mixing this color over here. So I'm now going to hold up the knife to the screen like this. And I'll see what does this color need to get me there. Because I know they're both similar colors. So I can see, all right, this guy over here needs more yellow. Obviously, my printout is way oranger than it should be. Hey? So I'm going to do the same thing. Let's get just a, a drop of medium in there as well. And I'm going to check it. That seems fine. And then we've got that color over there, which is a little bit more orangey. So I think we'll probably get away with just, because it's so little, just sneaking in a little bit of orange directly onto the, directly onto the canvas as we paint. So I think those two colors, they would probably, probably get us going. So for that, it's quite a large -ish area to block in. So I think I'll use a, I'll use my go-to brush, which is always my, my one centimeter soft fulbit. So that's like a, just less than half a cent uh, half an inch and let's start around here so i'm going to add a 
thin a layer of paint as what I can because we need to still add other paints over it so I'll just pick up a bit of that and then we go to the next one let's get those edges so what's nice is it as you can see the those sketch outlines are still shining through which is great so the minute we add in those browns then these sketch outlines will disappear on us so I'm not mixing the paints yet I'm just letting them lie next to each other See, the advantage of now not working the background in first is all this would have been wet with really dark, dark colors. And that's why I decided not to do the background first, because you'd have to keep trying to avoid that while we're working with super light yellows and stuff. And your chance of accidentally dabbing your hand in that paint and then going over your, your butterflies and your flowers is... Uh, yeah your chances are pretty good eh all right so to bring these two colors together all i'm going to use is just very light circular strokes just like that just until that line that they form disappears i think over there we can probably still go a little bit lighter right so i'm going to pick up just some some neat white without cleaning the brush or anything i'll just pop a little bit of neat white down there and then still in that circular motion, just work it out like that. I think that's fine. Okay, let's go to over here. So there's also a, a lighter area around here. And then it goes darker towards the edges again. Now, as you paint, you can go slightly over these outside edges, these outside lines of each object, because you're going to be bringing your, your background in next to it afterwards anyway. So it's quite all right to go slightly over the line. You'd rather want to go over the line than not over the line. And then you find when you're doing your background, oops, I'm having to make these objects of mine smaller. Uh, that's fine. Yes, all sorts of funny browns and stuff, eh? Maybe. Yeah, for those browns, we'll probably need to use some raw umber. What do you think? Okay, so Aram is asking, does it make sense to draw over the lines with ink? Um, no, no. That's why I like using the dressmaker's carbon paper because it's a um, it's water soluble or it's soluble. So generally, where, as you paint, those lines of yours will disappear. But if you have, no, you had to use a pen ink and these guys are shining through. Then you may just need to give this several layers to eventually get rid of those um, these lines. But you'll see if I if I really work over this because of the pen carbon, can you see there that line is gradually disappearing because it's it's because it's soluble, it, it mixes in with the paint that you that you're using and it disappears eventually. 
But if you go over this with ink, um, it would be too dark, and then your 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 paints, your outlines are going to shine through the whole time. So I don't recommend that. So Patricia's asking um, if I was working in acrylics, would I blend it in circular motions like that? Absolutely. The the painting techniques remain the same. It's just the the mixing. For example, here I'm, I'm adding medium into the paint. All right, so let me just get the next step going, and then I can continue with that, Patricia. Otherwise, we sit here and we're doing nothing. So I think I'm going to work in a little bit of um, just straight up yellow ochre into that, and we'll see if we can go dark enough. The techniques that you're using in acrylic and oil is generally 99,9% the same. So no special, no real differences. And that's why I often say you can you can work along in whether you're working in oils or acrylics, you can follow the same tutorials. It's just when when I'm adding, for example, for an for an oil class like this one, where I'm adding painting medium to make the, the paint thinner, you're going to be adding water. All right, so I'm putting just a little bit of paint down there, and I'm wiping off that excess on my paper towel. That way, I could move this paint around without it taking over that light yellow. Because you find that a dark color overtakes a light color very quickly. And that's why I didn't want to do the background first. All right, so that's a basic little shading just to get it darker over there. But now take a look over here. You've got little areas that are darker than others. So I'm going to turn that um, full bit of mine on its side so that I can get little finer details in. So it's as, as good as going over to a fine liner without changing brushes. So I'll darken up over there. I'll darken over there. Yeah, that's, that should be fine for there. These little places over here as well. So you can just put down a little bit of paint and just move it along. Same here on the edges as well. Christine is asking if I fix my sketch before I start painting. No, no, I never do. No, I just paint straight over it. Um, if I paint and, and I've lost maybe a line, then I'll just come back and estimate those that odd line that has now disappeared with other things that I, I do have on, on the canvas. For example, let's say these lines all disappear on me. I can I can judge them in. Remember, each butterfly is different, right? So his markings, each butterfly's markings are going to be unique. So I'm adding just a little bit of this around the edges. So each each guy's markings are different. So I'll, I'll judge those guys in according to these. Can you see the lines are following there? They're gradually curling to meet up with that line. So it's it's easy for you to, to estimate that yourself. Okay, let's go and take a look over here. Here we've got a bit of change of angles, hey, because there's one um, wing, there's another wing, and then here this wing is now coming forward towards us. So let's get that tip of that wing darker. So these little shadings that we're adding is going to tell us 
the angle of that of that wing there yeah here's a bit of more finer shadings and stuff going on so i think there i will go over to a fine liner just something like this nice soft soft hairs on it and as you can see i'm picking up really tiny 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 amounts of paint because you've got that bit of a bit of a rib defect maybe i can see if i can zoom in a little bit more on that area so that you can see that rib defect better can you see there here there's that bit of a rib defect so i'm going to just put them down in lines like this first and then we'll see what we need to do to get it looking correct so we've got lines and now i can see each of those lines is thinner here at the bottom and broader at the top so it's almost like a little bit of a triangle so i'll just broaden up the top bits That should be fine. There's that there. A little bit of a line in that area. And then the rest seems to be pretty much markings. Some of that is coming down in the body area over there as well. So let's just bring that down to that vicinity. And there's a bit of brown over there too. Yeah, I think that's that's good enough for that. So, so far there was nothing difficult, eh? It was pretty easy so far. Straightforward. Now we need to get those markings on the butterfly. So for that, I think I'll pop down a bit of raw umber. It does seem to be like a raw umber, and yeah, maybe even a burnt sienna kind of color. So let's see, maybe we'll put down the raw umber around, around there on the palette. So if I check it out, we should be able to just use that as is. So to make sure that this dries nice and quick, I'm going to take some of this. Just a pea size, we don't need much of it. Let's put it down over there. And just work in one drop of your painting medium. If your paint is now thicker, then obviously you'd want to add a bit more, but my paint is nice and nice and creamy. Let's see what kind of consistency you want to say we've got here. I would say like a margarine consistency at this stage. All right, so let's start getting these little these little shapes in. So as I start, instantly I can see the paint is not coming off the brush nice and easy, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin down this paint even more. So I'm going to add just one more drop in there.
and see if that's enough. See if he's coming off the brush easier. Still not. I add another drop and so on. In other words, what I'm trying to do is add just enough paint so that the paint flows nicely off the brush without making it so so thin that it's like watery. If it needs to be watery, so be it. And why am I doing that? Because if I ever need to add any layers over this, those subsequent layers need to be thinner, right? To get your, your fat over lean rule correct. So I'm only going to add enough paint to, so that it does what I need it to do. So I'll start off with these major... What would you call them? Ribs? Christina's asking if I use black paint to my paintings. Yes, I do use black paint to my paintings. Um, it all depends what I'm what I'm working on. If I need a really dark background, the in general, you'll find that. If you look really carefully, things are seldom black. They, they've usually got some other bias to them, maybe a bit of a bit of green or a bit of blue, something like that. So I always try and find that underlying color first. Right, can you see over here? It's a very thin thin line so what i do to get that thin line is i pick up the paint like this and then i turn the brush around 180 degrees and i turn it around and i, and I pick up the paint again so as i drag that brush through there can you see you're getting like a very sharp chisel point if i turn him on his side can you see there so that really sharp chisel point allows me to get these thin little lines over there so he starts off thin and then he goes broader and then as the paint disappears off the brush you're getting that that fading effect but if i need to use need black yeah absolutely i use i use black but i seldom use it just neat straight out the tube unless it's like a really bright modern painting for example like a pop art paintings they really do you can't paint them without a good, neat black. So you'll see I have lamb black in my in my mix, in my in my box of tricks. I have Payne's grey. So if your paint isn't coming off the brush here, it just tells you that you must add a little bit more medium into the mix. Now, these lines aren't solid. Can you see that? They're quite... Sometimes they're thicker and darker, and sometimes they're lighter, and so on. So what I'm doing is, I'm using a very light touch on the brush. So that sometimes the brush is actually lifting up off the canvas. So as you do this, be patient. Just take a while.
don't rush whatsoever. And like I say, also, I'm, I'm even though I'm using these lines from the actual reference photo, don't have to get them the same. So if you go off the line or if you do your own thing eventually with these lines, that's fine. Alrighty, let's get these little larger marks in over here. So it's little triangles and they seem to, and, and dots, they seem to go smaller towards the edge or the tip of the wing and then a bit larger and more triangle shaped as we move down towards the the central bit and there's a few other marks Get them nice and just rabs and dabs to get them looking organic. So they're not perfect. You want them to be a little rough. Okay, and here's other ones. And these other ones, yeah, they're still roughly around the same. You can sort of say in line with, with the, the other guys. But they're larger. So that's fine. Here, can you see there's like almost like a bit of shading work happening there, right? Eh? So I'm going to take my brush and just roll it. And then all that paint, all that excess paint will now roll off the brush. So I've basically got as good as nothing on this brush. And I'm just going to use like a sort of a, what would you call it? A dry brushing kind of effect. It's not quite a glaze because we haven't thinned down the paint. But we're just using this tiny amount of paint. So the paint that you're putting down is essentially so thin that you've got some of that yellow from the back shining through. And that's fine. That's giving it that nice, soft, delicate look, eh? Let's see. This guy seems to run around this vicinity around here. So all of this I'm about to do without picking up any new paint. Just that little bit of paint that's there. See, here's an interesting observation. Kamlesh is saying, um, from his experience, the burnt umber doesn't flow smoothly. So he prefers to... Um, make their own but now yeah some paints especially the the browns do tend to be a bit more grainy and that's just simply because of the the pigment they've had to use to to make that paint Alrighty, so that's all done so what i'm checking now is just all this initial background work that we did those shadings and things and i can see now that this here needs to go a bit more i can be a bit more bold with that so i'm just working that up a little bit higher like that even if you have to go over these lines a little bit that's fine it's uh, really quick to just pop them back in again Hey Dennis, welcome. Okay, 
Okay, let's continue with the with the next wing. So this one I'm going to do it a little bit faster. You know now what I'm doing. So now depending on your the weather by you because you've added medium to this this may have now started to become a little bit tacky so don't be shy to add maybe an extra drop just to get the consistency of the paint right again so that it can flow nicely off the brush remember to create your chisel points to get these little fine lines and a nice delicate touch Okay, let's get those little triangly bits in. Some of these ones have got just that short little line here in between like a little mini rib over there like that quite subtle so I'll pull that in because that helps me tell me where these little other marks are those guys in so these ones here are quite subtle so I'm making sure there's very little paint left on my brush when I do these ones so then you can come over one or two places multiple times to make it um, thicker so Ben this is asking what medium do I use um, this is just a little in-house mix that I make um, I'm going to show you what's a what's a good what's a good medium to buy. I bought one the other day to test drive it. That's available everywhere. Let me just get to my cupboard here. This one the liquid fine detail it's essentially the same thing as what what i use and then i use a, a dropper like this which you can get at the pharmacy to uh to dispense the medium All right, let's take a look. I'm just having a quick peep over and see. Is, is this similar to, to what I've got over there? Yes, it is. All right, so now these guys over here. What happens with those um, markings is... Let me get a piece of paper. Well, you know what? I've got a better idea. Let's use the photograph, the printed photo. 
when that wing is pointing away or uh, how would you put it parallel to you then you see those markings as they are but now because of perspective this wing over here we're looking down at it right like this so it's gone from there it's now at that angle so i'm going to take this piece of paper let's do that and let's twist it so that it points towards us like that look what's happening to those markings can you see that they're flattening out So look carefully at, say, these knots over here. Look at the width of that dot as I twist it. The width stays the same. But its height or its depth is, is, is becoming less because of perspective. So that's what you're going to do over here is... Make sure that everything's depth is very shallow. And that way you'll get the perspective on these guys looking correct. So instead of drawing like there, we were or drawing, <laughs> we were painting a, a, a rounded shape. Yeah, it's just going to be little, little lines. And those lines are actually those little same round dots. Right, so I'm now using the, the photograph as a reference. And I'm going to get them similar. But it doesn't have to be perfect. There's a few little lighter marks and so on. So these guys here are also quite um, orange. -er, so you can easily take, say, some maybe a bit of orange or a bit of uh, yellow ochre into that. Just to get that, that difference in color. Okay, so I'm having a suggestion of using white spirit. I'm not a big fan. I, I, I'm not recommending white spirit, and I'm going to tell you why. The white spirit was originally designed to clean the paint off your brushes. In other words, same as Terps. It breaks down the bond of the pigments to clean your brush quicker. So now you're using that on your painting. So by mixing that white spirit or turps into your paint you've broken down the bond so initially your painting is going to look great but over years because of that weaker bond in the paint between the paint molecules you're weakening you've weakened the structure so the painting is not going to last as long and that's when you start finding your painting will crack or when you wipe your fingers over it, you'd have like a bit of a paint residue on it. And that's just simply because you've, you've broken down that bond between the paint molecules. So they're not as strong anymore. So I don't recommend that. I know a lot of people use it and it's a very traditional thing to do, but... Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm not willing to take that chance. I'd rather use the painting medium. The painting medium is designed specifically for um, 
for mixing into your paint for thinning down your paints and it's usually got a varnish in it and that varnish is what adds that extra strength so your painting in the end of the day is actually stronger than it would be even just on its own all right so here there's all sorts of little marks and things to create that face but now can and the body can you see it's quite rough let me zoom in a bit further look at that that's really quite it's crazy little shapes and things so you don't really want to know what the heck is going on there i certainly don't so i'm not going to even try and figure out what it is i'm literally going to just copy blindly as blindly as what i can these markings and if i do that it would look it would look fine so there's that that sort of ties up with this that rib defect over there and there's a little bit of bit of greeniness so i'm going to wash the brush I'm going to take just a tiny amount of the sap green into some of that yellow over there. Very, very low amount of green. I'll just whack that in there. Oh, let's take some more. There are some darker bits. This whole under, underside here is, is quite dark. So I'm just going to pop some of those darks in there. Make sure I get that little, that little, I, I'm assuming it's like an eye, but that's where the eye is. I'm going to make sure I get that nice and dark. And I'm going to make sure I get that little sharp edge over there because that's going to tell you where the wing the wing ends and the and the body or the the yeah the body and the face starts okay so essentially you've got that guy finished now right so what I would do at this stage is just stand back and, and check things. Let's see, for example, here in this area here, it doesn't seem to be quite intense enough, so I'm taking a bit of orange into the yellow ochre. And I'm just going to work that in there. Let me just get a tiny touch of medium that I can dip into. I'm just going to intensify this with that little bit of extra orange in it. Just quickly fade it out. And then this area here can go a little bit more, almost like a bit more greener, eh? So let's take some, maybe some sap green into the raw umber. And let's tap that in there. So I'm just intensifying those contrasts, that's all. Because when you when you're working, you tend to sort of because you're concentrating on one specific area, 
you 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 get lost in the details and and you forget about and you don't see the whole picture so that's why when i'm done with something i like to always just stand back and have a look and see am i still in the in the right direction are my contrasts correct and so on and i think those are fine there here we can also probably still add a little bit more of these orangey orangey colors we can strengthen them up a little bit That should be fine. And then here as well. Here my, my oranges have maybe I didn't take that initial shading far enough. So some of those nice little shading on that tip of that that wing over there has disappeared on me. So I'll just put a little bit of paint down there. And then just blend it down. Yeah, that's I think that's that's fine. When we bring in this nice dark background, all these lovely light colors would work great. Fantastic. Give me a second. I'm going to put you on the wide camera and then I can um, readjust the other one onto the flower so we can get a nice close-up zoom of that flower while, while we paint it Yeah, there we go. That should do the trick. All right, let's get some, get our references and stuff up again. Maybe like that. Over the palette over there. Alrighty, so when you're doing a flower like this, you do now need to do just a little bit of planning first. Because we always work from the back and we work our way forward, right? So here we do have that situation where there are things at the back and there are things in front. So let's put the, let's put the print down there. So I'll do these guys first because they weigh at the back, and then that guy then that guy, then that guy, and that guy, and this dude at some point, and then these guys at the end, eh? So you've got far, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, and right in front. And that's why we can get these uh, uh, petals overlapping each other correct, and you get that natural look to it. So if I look at the colors, they are mostly the same as what we've got inside the inside the butterfly. So I think we can pretty much use mostly the same colors. We've got some lovely neat um, yellow over there, possibly a little bit, yeah, tiny touches of oranges as we come down here, more oranges. And then we've got those yellow ochre kind of bits over there. So I'm going to wash the brushes. That way I know I'm starting off with a, with a fresh start. I don't want to use any uh, contaminated colors in the flower right off the bat. So it's nice to have a fresh start. Because especially with those yellows, we need beautiful 
bright vibrant colors and we the last thing we worked with was, were, were those browns so you don't want to get any of those browns in there all right so let's take a look at those back petals are quite quite light so i'm going to put down that ye the the lightest yellow the one that we used for that central top wing Let's get, just pop that down and i'm going to just use a a really small a tiny full bit you can also just use a the same fine line as what you were before this just saves me having to make a chisel point because it's permanently in a chisel point because each of these petals are round so let me get something that we can make some petals with So out comes the trusty old play-doh <laughs> it always works so well for explaining things so i'm going to grab a blob of play-doh out here and let's just form a petal shape and let's see what happens to these petals when we and and the shapes and the light on them when we hold them at different angles so i'm making sure that the tips are, are nice and thin so that we can get that effect as well all right and now then that that petal is curved like this eh? like that awesome now let's take a look and see what happens when you're looking at it flat on so i'm turning it so that the, the light is shining directly on it can you see i've got roughly the same color from here all the way through to there because it's pointing directly towards the light so it, for all intents and purposes it looks flat and you can see that on this petal over here can you see he is pointing more towards the light or most towards the light him and and even this one over here let's maybe bring that guy back in there again easier to visualize so this guy and that guy but no look on the photo don't look on my print my print is terrible look on there and there can you see they're pointing quite towards the light so that the colors over them are roughly the same that guy at the back he's he's not pointing towards the light he's more pointing like that so you've got a darker side and you've got a lighter side So as you turn this guy, as these petals turn and curve, they're going to get different lighting on them. So in, like in the studio, my son is coming from the right to the left. So this is lighter and that's darker. But if I turn him more towards the light, that evens out because it's more the sun is more even over that petal. You see that? And the same thing from here to here. Um, this bottom piece, as he curls in, underneath there it curls more away from the light less light can get in there and that's why it's dark inside there so it's really important to get these um, highlights and shadows and things in because they show the the curl or the curve of each of these these petals All right, so i'm going to pick up a little bit of orange and just put it here where it's closer for me to to work with now i don't have to keep leaning over all those other other paints there so i'll pick up just the tiniest amount of orange let's maybe just work a, a dot of medium into that as well just to help for the drying this is, is good enough as it comes out the tube it doesn't need to be thinned or anything consistency is fine that tiniest amount of paint because look it's a really small um, 
petal and it's got a really small it's not a really dark intense orange so I'm going to put the tiniest amount over there and then I'm going to take my cloth and I'm going to wipe all the excess paint off of that so I've just got that little bit of paint there and I'm going to work it in so now look what's happening because that petal is now curved like this this piece here is pointing away from the light so it's darker as it curls around there it gets more sunlight so it becomes darker or becomes lighter and that gives you that little shading over there so to get that shading I'm putting down the darkest color on the darkest spot and I'm fading it out this one as well it's got the same thing but it's a lot more subtle can you see that so I'm going to use just a little bit of paint that's left on this brush and add that super subtle little that super subtle little shading in there that's good enough for that alrighty so now we can tackle him or him so I'm right handed so I'm going to work on the left hand first and then move to the right that's where I'm not working over any wet paint okay so let's first take a look and see how does this guy curl and how do the how does the sun affect it it's lightest here in the center so that's what I'm looking to to get now is put down these paints right colors right places in order to get the curl of this petal as best I can so I'm going to put down some yellows on that side and a darker yellow on that side and a, the lighter yellow in the center and that's already started to give me the curl now we'll go over to the to the oranges so I think I'm going to be clever and I'm going to use more than one brush for this blocking in stage that way I can use the the one brush just for the yellows and another brush for the for the more oranges so I pick up just a tiny amount of orange again so this is it's a soft bright brush see he hasn't got the, the sharp edges all right so now I'm going to take a look where is the darkest I know here on the inside is going to be darkest because as he curls in behind this petal it's not going to have as much sunlight and then you've got that one curl over there curl over there and here's where it becomes really important to get these curl of the petal correct and there we've also got a shading over there but it's not as prominent so I do have just a tiny amount of orange left on the brush so now's a good time to to do that guy So it's not just neat orange, it does seem to have a tiny touch of yellow ochre inside it to get that color correct. So it's a mixture of, of orange and yellow ochre. So we'll do this one petal, possibly another one, and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and mix a color. Okay, so now this piece over here, I can see is dark at the top, and he's actually curling, as he curls down, it's actually getting lighter. So this piece here is pointing the most towards the sunlight. I must say this is quite an unusual petal because you don't really have those normally have such a strong rib defect in it the sun must be just catching it at a, at a, at a funny 
in a funny way. Okay, so here's really important. This petal curls in behind this one in front of it, right? So you have to get these colors and shadings and things that you're doing going over this petal. So go straight into it. Go well over the line if you, if you need to, to make sure that you get this shading correct. That way it's going to run in nicely behind the petal in front of it and look natural. So when you first start something like this, like here with this flower, we're not 100% sure of those colors. So don't be shy to, to, to play around and adjust colors a bit. Once you're happy, then you can go ahead and maybe mix up a, a larger pile or something like that. Like I can see uh, initially it looked all orange, but I'm, I'm having to add a surprising amount of yellow oak in there. Okay, so now we've got that shape. He's darker to the sides, lighter in the center. Now I'm going to look at details. For example, there's a little darker thing over there. It's a little darker bit over there. As the, the petal itself has got little ribs in it. So now I'm going to look at little things like that and, and work them in. And that's going to give me the detail bit that you that you want. There. Look over here, it's really light, so I'm actually even working in just a, a dash of white over that. So with these petals as well. That petal has thickness, so let me see if I can show that to you. What happens about to that thickness? There, yeah, you can see it quite nicely. So let me just finish forming this. There we go. All right, take a look. Here's the color of the petal. Can you see it's that one darkish color? But now look on the edge. Can you see that? It's suddenly a little bit lighter on that edge over there. There you can now really see it beautifully. Look at that. In other words, the edge of your petal picks up a little highlight. And you can see it nicely. On, on this petal over here, look at that beautiful light edge. There, look at that beautiful light edge. This one over here as well. So I'll generally put that light edge in here right at the end with a fine liner. And that just adds you that nice little bit of detail that most people miss. Cool, let's take a look at this guy. So your first reaction when you want to paint this guy is I'm going to use, all right, this piece here is lighter, that goes darker. So I'm going to use this color over there and I'm going to use that other yellow over there. And that's not the case because this petal is not at the same angle as that petal. So the light falling on this guy is different to the light falling on that guy. So his highlight may not be the same as this one's highlight. So what I want you to do is look and compare. Look at this one's highlight and compare it with that one's highlight. Is this one's highlight lighter or is it darker? 
So in this case, it's darker, eh? So I can't go ahead and just use this paint because it'll be too light. I need to use it a little bit darker. So you can maybe start off and put down a little bit of that down there and then go ahead and take some of this and work it in there to create an impromptu color. But at the end of the day, this is a little bit darker than that guy. All right, so I'm going to start off all the way back to the start, and that is just putting basic colors down in basic places, roughly where I see them. So I've got that over here. We've got all those oranges and stuff. So I'll stick with just adding that that yellow in there. Then we'll add that in as a as a separate shading because I don't want to get this brush full of different colors. I said I'm keeping this brush for my yellows. It just saves me washing the brush because if I'd used this brush to paint all of that, it would have now had that orange on it, right? So then I would have had to wash the brush before I did this. So now I'm just saving myself a good amount of time for not having to wash my brush. Because now I can just put him one side and go over to the brush that I was using for the orange. Which was, yeah, this one over here. So he's fine. So let's take a look. We've got some quite intense oranges over there. So I'm picking up some orange and some yellow mocha. But mostly orange. Putting it down there. And now again, I'm comparing this color with a photograph and I'm also comparing it with what I've got over there. Is this, as I can see on the photograph, it's darker than anything over there. Is this on my canvas also darker than anything I've got over there? If it isn't, then I need to adjust it. Okay, and he fades out really quickly upwards. And again, can you see I've gone over the edge over there? So that when I got when I get this this um petal painted in, you will overlap that one hundred percent. Okay, let's get to over here. So I can see that edge is light, so I'm not even gonna go out to that edge. I know he's lighter. So I'll save myself the hassle of trying to lighten him up later afterwards. Okay, now I'm looking and comparing. This color that I'm putting down, is it too light? Is it too dark? Is it the same? Is it the correct tonal value? And so on. There's a funny little dark outline over there. I think I'm going to not be so bold with that dark outline. It's, it's unusual for something in the background to have an outline around around exactly where the the thing in front of it is. So here this little rib has also got a little bit of a gap. Or it's a little bit lighter, that central rib. So I'm leaving myself just a gap between that line that I initially draw where that rib is. Just a little gap. And that leaves that bit of initial blocking in yellow exposed there. And just like that, I've got a free rib. There's a little line over there. So I'll pop him in as well. And let's see, over here in this corner here, there's some real darker ones. Like that, and then it goes lighter again. Oh, 
right, so let's take care of that little edge. So I'm checking what color it is. It does seem to be this bright that bright yellow over there and then it gradually disappears on us so i'm going to go over to the darker the darker yellow and also just gradually push him away with this orange so can you see how i've swapped brushes i put that edging in with this and then the minute i needed to use the orange i went back to this brush over here Alrighty, let's get that a little bit darker there. Whoops, see, that's a bit too dark. So if something like that happens to you, where you're, oh dear, I've gone too dark, instantly just wipe off all that excess on your cloth so that the paint, there's no more extra paint on your brush. Now I'm going to work this color in. And as I do, I'll stop and wipe off any paint that's now been picked up on the brush or on my cloth. So that way I'm not only working in that paint, I'm, I'm getting rid of it as, as I go along as well by wiping it off on my cloth. Let's increase that contrast over there as well. And look at that beautiful rub effect we've got there now. All right, let's take a look. Here's this little rub effect over here. It can also be strengthened up a little bit. So I've increased his contrast a little bit. Yeah, then I think for, for this guy, I think we're good to go. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so the next closest petal is this guy. You can't see that little corner there, but I, I think you, you're you okay with not seeing that corner there. All right, so again, I'm looking and I'm comparing before I even start. What colors need to go there? Look at that. That's white. So it's even brighter than this guy. So that edge over there is getting light that none of the other petals is getting so i'm going to wash this little fine liner of mine pick up some neat white and put it down over there now white discolors incredibly quickly i'm sure you've noticed that so I'm going to take this white further and do what it needs to be. Look at that. Way further. It's all that and we only need it over there. Because I know it's going to discolor. And then from there. Look there. That's quite an intense yellow over there. It's not, it's not this yellow. It's that one. Possibly even neat yellow. So I'll start with this one. And I'm going to start way off, away from that white. And I'm going to just gradually push this closer to the white until eventually I'm leaving just that tiny amount of white that I need exposed. I'll never touch that white area ever again. Yeah, that's not, that's not intense enough. So I'm going to use some neat cadmium yellow. Let's get that over there. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, wow. That's going to look nice and sunny. No doubt about it. Okay, that will come down to here. That's probably as far as we can go with that. So let's start working. I think let's start working mostly yellow ochre with a little bit of orange into that let's put some down and again i'm putting it down in the area that i think needs to be darker than what it is it's easy for me to push it up 
into the lighter area. Then trying to get that lighter area that's now too dark, get it light again. Does that make sense? In other words, it's easy to darken something easier to darken something up than to lighten something up. Okay, we've got all that. Yeah, that's looking great. So I've got a good feel for that now. And I've also got a good feel for the color. So I can see this color that I need ends up way over there. Can you see you've got that little lighter ridge from the, the edge of the petal? So I'm going to avoid that edge as well. Come up over here. We've got this rib over here. So let's start forming these little r ribs inside the petal. And we've got that rib over there. Gently go over that edge to soften it. There, yeah, that's fine. All right, so now I'm going to take this white brush fine liner that had the white on it. Let's pick up a little bit of yellow and let's just gently bring in some of those yellows along these rib lines into there so that we're leaving little lighter white ribs exposed. In that area over there. Okay, let's take a look. I think I can wash the the fine liner. And I'm gonna just sharpen up that over there. Wash the fine liner again. Get some yellow. Let's really just establish that edge over there. Just to make sure we don't lose it. Right, let's work all these guys in. Okay, now we can start getting darker over there. So instead of where I had lots of yellow ochre and a little bit of orange, now I'm going to go for more orange and less yellow ochre. And that will darken up those bits over there and make them look correct. Arams are saying they've never painted with um, oils before, but it looks like it the colors mix and shade better. Um, so Arams, I'm assuming you normally work in acrylics. Let me know. Okay, so I'm adding just a little bit of raw umber into that. Just in this little spot of here, it just seems darker over there, eh? Okay, so now that I've got a feeling for all these shapes and things, I know where everything goes. So now I'm adjusting the colors. Now I can intensify all those tonal values by gradually darkening up these guys and so on. So all I'm doing is just pushing that, that color upwards up to where I need it. Mm. 
and just gradually intensifying things until you're happy with w happy that you've got it to where it needs to be Getting there, right? Eh? Getting there quite nicely. So it's really important for me to get these. It's like a little rib over there, and a little rib over there, and then there's a that darker rib over there. So I'm making sure I'm getting them nicely worked in, because they show you the the angle that the petal is sitting at. Yeah, okay, so Aram's is saying he works in acrylics and the oil paints look like they blend smoother. Um, yeah, the oil paints do blend smoother. So that's why what you want to do with your acrylics is layer them. You're going to add this layer down, let it dry and add another layer over it. If you want a really good example of that, on my website, go and take a look at the Girl with Pearl Earring Glass. There I showed nicely how to do that layering with acrylics to get that smooth skin tone and stuff that you want. Alrighty, so here's something interesting. Remember when we had this? We were looking at this little highlighted edge over there. At one point, I curled it over like this, and then you could really see that light edge nicely, hey? Because now you've got, in, in this situation, the, the, the sunlight's coming from there, it's hitting here. It's hitting there even more. Here at the back, there's absolutely no light because the, it's it's on the opposite side of the light. So that's even darker, eh? Look carefully now at this petal. Can you see there? There's a little dark ridge at the bottom there. With the same... Where you can see that little bit of the back. So let's just wash that yellow off that fine liner there. And pick up some of the raw umber. Maybe even just a touch of orange into it to make sure that it's still flower color. And now you're going to add a fine little line over here. Let's just get some medium. This, this line now needs to flow nicely off the brush. Get some medium in there so that this paint is essentially as thin as an ink. And I'm going to add that thin little line over there. Like that. As it curls in under here, this line goes actually even darker. Inside that area over there. These little edgings that I'm doing here are, are quite important. I want you to really look out for them when you're painting flowers. Okay, inside that little edge of there, it's just really nice and dark. So it's quite raw umber and orange mixture over there. No light can get in there, so it's, it's, it's well dark. So look what's happening. You've got light over here because it's out on the outside. It can get lots of light as it curls in underneath these petals. Less than light can get in. So it's getting darker and darker and darker until in, inside there no light can get in. It's really dark. And that really dark gives you that nice looking in effect. Which makes that, makes 
and that contrast over there from between the light and the dark makes your petal curl out like that and looks like it's coming out towards you as opposed to just being a flat shading it's really important awesome there's a nice big one let's tackle him so he starts off straight up really nice and bright so i'm going to use going to use the yellow so it's quite a big area i think i'm going to take some yellow and work a bit of medium into that just for the drying so just a drop or two So I'm looking for that margarine consistency, so it is nice and not too thin. Yeah, that's great. Seems all right. Okay, so now it's back to the the full bit again. So I know it's not on the edge, so I'm instantly avoiding the edge. Bring that down to here up to this point there you've got lots of lots of oranges in there so it's a nice thin layer of paint can you see there's not it's not a lot of paint on the brush when you're working with flowers Think of it this way. That petal is all nice and soft, eh? So when you think of soft, you think of thick, chunky paint, but you think of thin, delicate amounts of paint. And there's your answer. Unless, of course, you're painting with a knife, but that's a whole different ball game, eh? Look carefully. Look at this color, and look at that color. Can you see that this here is more like yellowy? We're here it's starting to become a little bit more orangey I'm also now looking for those little edges so I'm leaving that edge already open because I know he's going to need to go lighter here that edge disappears and in actual fact that edge becomes dark so I can take this all the way to the to the edge for now it's easy to darken something up Bring this down. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's that's far enough. Let's take a look on this edge over here. This edge of that petal is actually this yellow. So I'm going to take that yellow all the way down there for that edge. And that should be fine. Okay, so let's start working in these uh, the shadings. So remember, it's initially you want to get the shape of the petal right, and then you come back in and add the rib details. Let's start in over there and see what color we got. Then we can work him out. So always start from the too dark into the lighter because you don't want that now to suddenly go start off too dark and then you've got a problem all right so all i'm going to do here now is just get that shading right all these little shadings to get this shape of the petal correct and after that then i'll worry about adjusting all the tonal values and getting them 100 percent
is this process starting to to make sense now? Now that we've done a now that we've done a few petals. Alright, so I've got quite a bit down there and I can see it's roughly especially over here, roughly the correct colour already. So to make sure that I don't go too dark too far up. I'm going to get rid of all that excess paint and then just work it in. In other words, now all I'm doing is moving the paint that's there around without any possibility of adding new paint. So I can't go any darker than what I've got there already. It's impossible because there's no more paint to make it darker. It can only go lighter as he mixes in. That's always the safest option. I must say, painting flowers is one of my favorite subjects. I could sit and paint flowers the whole day. I love painting flowers. It's so relaxing. Okay, we said, yeah, it was a bit more oranger than that side. Hey? So I'm going to work some of this orange that's left on the brush inside that, inside that yellow over there. Okay, so in the process, can you see those guys are going lighter than what they need to be? That's great. That's, that's what you want. You've got the shading correct. You know where everything goes. So now for me to work in some extra oranges. So for example, over here. Or over here. It's not a problem. Because as you do, look what you're doing. You're adding in your rib defect. Alrighty, so all I'm concentrating on now is just getting those those tonal values right. Or closer to what I see them on the what I see them on the photograph. And as I do, these little Ribs and things are working themselves in. Okay, 
So don't rush this process. This process is what gives you the shape of that flower. So if you're still new to painting flowers and stuff, this could take a while to get all these um, these tonal values and things in and correct. But I'm sure you can see it's it's worth it's worth the time. So like here I'm adjusting this tonal value and I'm using just the absolute tip of the brush and the lightest touch. Flowers are very gentle, so I'm being gentle with the painting as well, with the flower on the painting. Super light little taps with a brush, with tiny amounts of paint. And that's how I'm adjusting it. Alrighty, let's just soften this guy up. So I've wiped my brush on the on the cloth, so there's no excess paint. I'm just working it in, and that will soften it up. And that's great. Now we can go over to the fine liner again. Let's go and get the details in on the edges. So look carefully, and you'll see here there's a few other little ribs and things. So you can work that in if you want to. I generally don't worry too much about these little tiny ones they don't always add a ton of value but if you want to well go ahead work them in can you see there's just almost in a in a bit of a transparent effect okay so let's go over to this light the light yellow again and let's see let's get that edge in over there so that edge starts off quite light over here and it does seem to quickly change to this this yellow my paints are thickening up it's quite hot here by me today so just adding a few a drop of medium in there to just adjust the consistency of the paint again so that it flows off the brush even there, it seems to be even a little bit brighter than that. So I'm working in even more. Cadmium yellow. Yeah, that should do the trick. And here we had that neat cadmium yellow. So I'll start off with neat cadmium yellow in this edge over here. And then gradually change him to the lighter one. And then we end up with that initial really bright yellow. In other words, even this little rib over here has a shading on it. Take this. Yeah, it may be pointing nicely towards the light. And you can see it on this one. You can see it on our sample one. Look there. It's lighter here. Look at that edge over there. It's darker there. So it is fading away darker to that side. And is fading away darker to that side. So even that little edge is affected by light. So you have to get that edge correct. OK, 
Okay, and then while I've got this lighter paint on the brush, let's take a look. Inside the petal, there's a little lighter piece over there. In other words, that little bit of the rib over there is catching a highlight. That little rib over there is catching a highlight. And then that one over there is catching a highlight. Cool. All right, so I think you're getting a good feel for these petals now. So I'm going to do the next one reasonably fast at, at normal speed. You can see how fast these things actually go. Okay, so Marais asking, um, I love when the flowers have that beautiful transparent effect where the sun shines through. Do you get that with the lightest yellow and white as you're doing now? Or do you use a glaze afterwards? Um, I would paint it straight up. Let's say, for example, this petal of here was, was shining through. So then you'd find what happens is you can have these kind of colors in the sunny bits and then maybe this guy over here is casting a shadow over there so you can't you can't see it then it's that shadow over there so you're going to have essentially a line over here with that cast shadow is and all these colors on this piece underneath that line are going to be dull and that's what makes that area there that's bright appear transparent so you can paint it as you go, Murray, not a problem. Okay, so I'm checking the colors on this one. It's quite, the colors are quite intense. I'm avoiding the, the edge because I can see that's nice and light. Yeah, neat, pretty much neat cadmium yellow down this guy. block everything in except that corner there that's really dark so it's pointless blocking that corner in with yellow because we're just gonna have to darken him up anyway oh that's neat orange eh? so I'm gonna take the neat orange and I work it into this corner over there and that goes all the way up there against that rib or against that edge the the, the thickness of the petal I think this is also one of those flowers where the the edge of the petal actually curls a little bit back on itself. All right, so let's get that in over there, and then there's quite a quite a strong rib on that guy over there, which fades out to that side. I'm not going to bother with those. I suppose I can put just that guy in there to give me a feel for where he goes, but not that light one over there. Wipe off all the excess paint off the brush so that we can just move the paint that's there around. And let's blend this guy. It's this initial blending that's giving you all those beautiful, subtle um, color changes and stuff. If you didn't do this step here, where you start off too light, where you you, you won't get those nice, subtle colors and changes anymore.
to Aram saying he likes I use a little bit of paint. He ends up throwing 60% of his paint away afterwards. Um, I, I also tend to throw away way too much paint, I must admit. And that's just simply because I'm lazy. I, I hate mixing a color again. So I, I tend to mix too much. Then I know I'm not going to have to mix paint again. Um, but yeah, I think of it this way. You don't have to mix so much paint. It's easy to mix a color again because you know your ratios. So you don't have to be lazy like me. You can mix small amounts of paint and then just whack more together afterwards. But also as you as you work and gain experience, you, you do tend to get a feel for how much paint are you going to need for the area that you're going to cover. So it, it does, I suppose it does get better. And then of course there are times when you can when you can store the paint you don't have to chuck it you, you could hang on to it okay so i've got everything in place now so now i'm just adjusting Primrose is asking, is oils better than acrylics for painting flowers? No, no, I don't think so. Um, it is in the sense that I think you're going to be able to get your shadings quicker. Because remember, acrylics likes to be layered. So you'll probably be able to paint flowers quicker using oils because you you don't have all those layers you're, you're gonna be able to get your colors and stuff quicker but the end result yeah you're gonna be able to get them both identical alrighty so now here's something really interesting and something that's really important we've gone quite a way down the line now I want you to compare this is one of the first petals we painted, right? So compare this versus this and versus the colors on the photograph. Can you see these colors here are, are, are pretty, pretty accurate now? Because our eye has become more in, more tuned to the, to the colors that we need to make this flower look correct but now this guy over here we did him here in the beginning so a you had a white canvas and b you went you didn't get your head around the colors that were in the flower yet so these guys aren't necessarily the correct colors so i always go back and just have a look over the other colors because it's really quick to do adjustments. So I can see this here doesn't isn't as yellow as what it needs to be. So I'm just adding a quick little glaze or a color wash over there. And it's going to take me literally seconds to fix that. Because everything is in place. That little bit over there wasn't as orange as he needs to be so i'm going to do that get a bit more yellow into the mix as well and i'm going to adjust him So it's quite important that you go back and, and check the previous ones that you've done. That one there also needs a bit more yellow, but for, for today, 
I'm going to leave him as is because we now need to I've shown you how to adjust you know how to do that we do need to get a move on and, and get this guy done all right let's take a look at that petal over there right eh? so he's got some yellows over there this bit is quite browny yellow ochre so i'm going to take some of the raw umber and yellow mixture i'll put that down over there Yeah, um, Marais is also just reminding me of another another trick that we use, and that is to put your if you if you're going to use the paints again, you can keep your palette in the fridge or in the freezer. If you don't have space in the fridge, you can pop it in the freezer. That's your oil paints, not not the acrylic paints. The acrylic paints don't work so well with that. With them, I just cover them up. Alrighty, so these edges here seems to be quite some brownish. And even that, the rubbing in here seems to be brownish. So I'm going to just, it, it's quite a nondescript little petal that, so I'm not going to panic too much about this guy. I'll just really roughly get him, get him done. Because you're not going to look at this guy when the, when the, when the flower's finished, you're going to be looking at this petal, that petal, here. This, that's the focal point as far as this flower is concerned. So I'm not going to sweat the small stuff. There's a nice little bit of reflected light on that piece over there, so I'll pop that in. Okay, next one. Lots of... Okay, now look here. This guy is now overlapping that. So this edge over here, because we went over the edge when we painted this petal and that petal, we went over this one's edge. So here, you want to make sure you get that edge nice and sharp again. It's got to be a nice clean found line yeah don't put your acrylics in the fridge guys just uh, the oils you can you can store in the fridge so you would cover it with either foil or some uh, plastic wrap or even better if you've got a, you get yourself a, um, a, con a plastic container that's just slightly larger than your pallet. You can put the pallet inside the container with a seal, sealable lid and you pop that in the fridge because then you're now not getting any you're never worrying about any fumes or anything like that from the paints contaminating the the food or vice versa anything from the that's in the fridge contaminating right so over there is quite a bit of yellow ochre so i'm gonna just get some yellow ochre going there let's work that in in this area so there's no real yellows over there Oh, lightest color is this yellow ochre. So this is our most complex petal so far. And that there is orange. I'm not going to clean the brush. Just go straight into it. So all these colors flow one into the other, right? So you don't need to brush wash your brush at this point <laughs> getting all tongue-tied again <laughs> a 
cool. Let's start working these guys into each other and working them up to their correct places. So you know what I'm doing now. So as before, I'm going to do this one reasonably quick. There, it's sort of more, got a bit of a greeny tinge to it. So I'm going to take that sap green, bit of raw umber, into that without leaving the brush. So whatever colors on there, adding a bit of raw umber and, and green into it to get that. Let's get a bit more sap green there. It's a bit greener than that. Uh, Christine, I'm definitely going to explain the background as well. Um, but I'm, I'm going to do the background with this one plain. I want this to be, a, this is a beginner painting. I don't want this to get too complicated. So we're not going to do all those um, background details and stuff. Today. And this edge is really, really dark. So I'll start just with raw umber for now. And we'll see if that gives us dark enough. If it doesn't, we'll have to add some other colors into it. Raw umber is a bit of a, bit of a transparent color. So you may lighten up quite fast on us. Can you see that? It just disappears on you. But it's fine. He is giving us the quick color. We are in the in the ballpark as far as getting these colors right are concerned. I think you we can maybe do another, a different class where we concentrate more on the background. So we'll have something simpler in the foreground. And then I'll show you how to get that, the detail in the background. How does that sound, Christine? All right, so now I'm back to using that really super light touch. Because all we're doing now is adjustments. I've got the shape and all that. Making sure I'm getting this edge nice and sharp. EG, that would be cool if you could do that. Okay, let's work that in. It does seem to have a little bit of a, a darker edge in that vicinity over there. Yeah, what I'm really concentrating on is getting this lovely dark on the underside of this petal. Because this guy curls up. So that really dark that we get over there is going to make this petal curl up quite dramatically. So getting that dark on the inside over there is really important. Because this petal is, is key to giving us a ton of depth. Right, so yeah, I'm using the fine liner to get this edge nice and dark. I can't get as fine detail with the, with the full bit, is what you'd ideally want. 
So I put that down and I'm just using like a little bit of a stabbing motion to get up that ribbed effect in over there. And you just come back in and just sharpen up that edge there again. Okay, here as well. I'm just using that stabbing motion and that breaks up that edge. Can you see that? It makes it a bit more like a ribbed effect. Alrighty, so I'm going to do the same with the other side. I'm getting more orange in this bottom edge over here to get that nice and dark. It needs to go darker over there so that we can get this bit of a curling effect in the orange bits as well, not just in the brown. Can you see how nicely this this petal is, is curling up? Fabulous, eh? And that's all because of that lovely contrast, that dark there. Okay, I think this is this is good enough. I'm not going to make that perfectly looking perfect to the um, perfect to the photograph. I don't think it's necessary anymore. We've now got the look. You've got the feel. Let's do our edging. So it's light over here. There. Here's a little lighter piece coming down over there, a little rib there, and a longer one around here. Like that. This edge over there, he's dark again because he's pointing away from the light. So that's, I'm going to take neat orange with a little bit of, little bit of raw umber into it, so that it becomes a really dark, but not intense orange. So we'll run him down there. He's maybe still a little bit too brown, so I'll just pick up a little bit of orange and just run it over that. And that color that's on the that orange color that's on the brush will mix. And just there, I'm going to just tap the clean dry brush. Have a quick little shading over there. That's that. Okay, last petal on here. So his brightest color is neat cadmium yellow. So let's get that down there and on that edge there. Out over here and on that edge over there as well. Look at that.
Okay, let's get some oranges. So I'm now working a little bit quicker. Don't you try and work quicker. I'll, I'll just need to... Make sure that you've you've got all the techniques, and then I can get a move on, so that we can move on to the next technique. You take your time. Don't rush anything. Okay, so I'm fading all that in, getting a nice little shading over there. As it goes in over here, it's getting darker and darker. So I'm working in some more raw umber into the orange in that area over there. I'm darkening up towards that inside bit so that we can get that looking in effect. It's also quite amazing when you're doing flowers like this. Is sometimes you think, wow, the colors on this flower are so bright but then when you actually paint them and you're matching these colors you find that these colors aren't as bright as what you what you'd imagine them you're actually having to mix quite dull quite dull colors and that's fine you have to just Trust those dark, dull colors that you are mixing. Because that, it's those, usually those dark, dull colors, it's the shadows. And if you don't have the shadows, then your highlights don't look good. It's that old saying of, you can't have bright lights without dark shadows. Think about it. If you don't have these dark, dull colors in, all your bright colors have nothing to look bright against so there's quite a bit of ribs in 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 this area here hey quite unusual really deep ribs so i think i'll get these guys just Really rough little shaded in pieces. So then on each side of that rib, it's going to have a little, like a little highlight. So I'll work in that little highlight over there to show me that rib. They need to get it dark over here because that's your looking in effect. You'd rather here actually have it a little bit too dark than a little bit too light.
Okay, let's go over to a smaller brush. And let's start working in the the details because we've now got the shape right. Yeah, I'm not using raw umber, and I think you can actually even use um, a crimson to darken the orange. That would also work well. Okay, so just quick little, little darker bits, but now look at them, they're not all equally the same, some of them have got less contrast than others. Quite dark on that little down curly piece over there and the same over here so in other words this little petal is curling down away from you okay let's get some highlights in there so i'm going to take this yellow over here let's highlight that rib Take some neat cadmium yellow. Let's highlight along that rib over there. Little curly up corner over there got a disappeared on us. Let's see this edge over here, he's, he survived quite nicely. Just that last little bit. That's fine there. And then there's a few little dark bits on the edge over here. And I don't think this is necessarily from the curling up. It's probably this petal is on his way out. So he's not quite as fresh anymore. So I'm going to work those in because that adds nice little bits of interest. nice when you have little non-perfect bits okay so this edge over here has also got a little bit of greeniness to it so i'm putting that in there and i'm just quickly fading it upwards just with a tapping motion because that gives you now that that rounding of this edge over here so you put down the paint clean it clean your brush just by wiping it on, on your on your towel on your cloth same as what we do in those initial little stages and then you just move the paint that's down there around
yeah, some some crimson would work quite nicely in there, eh? Right, so over there. But uh well, we'll be working with the with the raw umber, so I'm gonna stick with that. There it's really nice and dark over there. And then it comes a little bit lighter towards the outside with a little bit of orange. So that's a petal that's now in full in full shadow, eh? What would also work nice over here is if you let this now this guy now dry and then you come back in with the raw umber and just give him a, that extra coat over here in these real dark bits to darken it up. The other alternative is to use uh, add a bit of French ultramarine into that. But that's fine. All right, let's stand back. We've we've basically done that flower now. So let's stand back. Let's see what it looks like. There we go. Alrighty, let's tackle that. That's quite simple. It's really straightforward. So let's see. Yeah, I think we can go back to that there again. That's good enough. It's quite in shadow there's not too much funniness over there so i'm washing the brush so to get that color i'm going to take raw umber and sap green and i'm going to whack them together what the raw umber does is it just takes that bright intensity or that um, the vibrancy of the sap green away and that will make it look more natural let's get one or two drops of medium into there just for the drying And now we can start putting this in. So what happens is in this painting, the sunlight is coming from the right to the left. So the left hand side is dark. So we're going to put this in like that. Then as we move towards the right, we're gradually going to work in a little bit more yellow. So I'll just steal a little bit of this yellow that we've got over there. No new colors necessary. And as I paint, I'm painting along the direction of the stem. And I don't mix these colors in perfectly. I leave it a bit of a, a bit of a rough shading. So can you see what happens? Now you've got that bit of a texture inside that and that makes it look nice and natural let's get a smaller a smaller brush here your the petal is casting a shadow so that there's dark so use that the neat sap green raw umber mixture I work it down there like that to show me that and I give it that little edge over there to show me that um, the shape of the shadow okay so I can see here's a little bit of a a rubbed effect inside that guy so I can do that and then right on the edge let's get a bit of this neat yellow 
Let's work it in over here, just below that that leaf over there. A little bit of neat yellow over there. There's a little bit of that yellow on the, this side of that rib as well. Okay, so that goes there. I usually don't put in excess effort with these leaves. I, I usually try and keep them quite plain. And the reason I do that is I want the flower, and in this case the flower and the butterfly, to do the talking. I don't want the leaves to steal the show. So I will often just reduce the amount of detail that I that I paint to to less than what I've got in the photograph. Okay, so this leaf is overlapping that stem. So can you see I'm getting myself a nice sharp line over there? Very basic, absolutely basic. So don't be shy to go over to whatever brush you need to, to get these little tips of the leaves sharp. Okay, so I'll just do a basic block in like that. And now we can see there's a little bit of detail work in some of these leaves. So all you do is, these leaves tend to pick up a bit of a, a reflection. So in this case, I'm just going to use that, the yellow. You can often just use white, or you can also use some sky color. I'll just pop in a suggestion of some of these details. There's that. Yeah, and this area, and this leaf over there, there's a bit of brown. leaf over there has got a nice little highlight on its edge but it does also have just a tiny bit of contrast between the left and the right tiny amount just to show that there's there's a bit of shape to that okay so we can use this lighter yellow and add a little edge along here for the edge of that that leaf. Same as what we've been doing with the with the flowers. And I'm going to check these things. Like that one there is too dark. That there is too dark. So now you just gently go over them to soften up those contrasts and get them to where you want them to be. little piece there needs to go darker again and so on and that's literally all the effort I'm ever going to put in on that I want to keep it simple because you're not looking there 
you put lots of detail in the things that people are looking at and just tiny amounts of details in the things that people are not looking at. Alrighty, so that's looking pretty cool, hey? So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to take a really dark, really dark green. And I'm going to block the background in with that. So let's see, who was asking about black earlier? I can't see now and I don't want to page too much through the through the chat. But I'm going to use I've got lamb black here. So I'm going to use some of that. Just just to show you how to use the black. If you don't, take raw umber and French ultramarine and just mix them together 50-50 and that'll give you a pain's grey. That's 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 good enough. So you're gonna take that and then you're gonna take your green. I'm just going to take the sap green and I'm going to mix it into that. In other words, this is now not a black anymore. It's a very dark green. And that's how I use my black most of the time. I'm always going to bias it towards some or other color. Now I'm going to get a reasonable amount of medium into this. Because I have a large area that I want to cover. So I haven't mixed up enough paint there because I'm not going to paint the whole background. I'm sure you know how I'm going to do that. It's quite plain. But I do want to just outline the flowers and stuff because then you're going to see the full effect of what we've done. At the moment you've got the white in the background. So you've got light against light. So you don't have that nice contrast. And that final beautiful vibrant effect that you're going to get with the dark background all right so now remember all of this here is wet so you can't go and put your hand in it so i'm going to take a nice big brush and i'm going to use it as a mile stick i just hold it in my hand and use the back and i'm going to let that rest wherever wherever i need to so that my hand is now resting on the stick or on the on the brush And of course that paint is now nice and thin. It's going to flow nicely off the brush. Allowing you to get nice smooth edges. All the way around these objects. So obviously, because we're doing the background last, you now have to be super careful that you don't go and touch into that. So what I always do, if I, in the odd occasion when I do do the background second, I'm going to outline these objects of mine with whatever brush I need to. Go down to the smallest, finest, fine liner or rigger brush if necessary. So that you don't undo all the hard work that you did by accidentally going over anything there was a little piece of dry paint there <laughs> so to pick that off so i've now made sure that i've wiped my hand off nicely on the on the cloth so it is nice and clean because you don't want any accidents at this stage 
You've worked too hard. <laughs> Do you have any oopsies? So the wire edge off everything first is this is fine work it's really fine detail so I do all this fine detail all in one go that way I'm careful all in one go then I can work a little bit faster around that object to broaden the I suppose you can call it the halo around it so there I've got a little antenna over there and an antenna over there is it an antenna or is it a tentacle? <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> So I'm working now a little bit faster to increase the halo around there, the width of it. And after that, then you can really slap in the rest of the paint really quickly because there's no chance of you accidentally going over all your hard work. Look how nice that butterfly stands out now. <laughs> okay, so Adams is confirming it's an antenna. So this is that part of the painting where you have to really hold your breath, eh? while you're getting these edges painted in nice and accurately. So for this painting, I'm going to stop over there because we now haven't painted that flower. So I'm just going to stop over there. All I want us to do is just get a... So that you can get a look of what it will look like. Once that background is in. Then you'll have a full appreciation for all the work that you've done today. Because then you'll see that those beautiful contrasts and the beautiful vibrant colors that we've been painting because you can't have bright lights without dark shadows and this is the dark shadows for the whole for the whole object So here's something that you have to really look out for now as well at this stage. You'll have little pieces in between. Like here, here's a little gap in between this petal and that petal where the background is shining through. So 
So you have to look carefully that you catch that. All those little those little bits. So I just look really carefully on the on the on a photo to make sure that I've that I've caught all of that. Okay, so can you see I've gone over to a smaller brush here when when necessary to get the finer details in. And now here you'll also see once I've got this dark in, why I didn't put in too much effort with the uh, with the stems and stuff. So look, they 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 don't really they don't stand out that much, eh? There's a really fine little edge over there. I'm never going to get in there with a with this brush. So I'll just skip it, and then I can come back with the with a rigger brush or a fine liner to get that in. Cool, we're nearly done. That was the hard work. Now the rest will go quick. Broaden the halo so that you can get as far away from the the flowers and stuff as possible. That's where you know there's no accidents when you're quickly doing the background, when you're quickly doing the rest. done. The end is in sight. Do you also, like me, get so excited when the you see your painting is looking good, but you're not quite done yet. <laughs> you just want to get it done. That's quite nice. It's coming together. Beautifully now. Then we're going to see it was uh, about three hours well spent. Broaden the halo. Alright, so let's just quickly do those tentacles and then we're done. The antenna. <laughs> <laughs> so I just need to just adjust the camera again for that guy. goes really quick but I do want to show it to you so that you know how to do it all right let's go back to the 
to that camera again. Let's get the reference photo up. So can you see they they're really quite they're really quite fine. So as I painted the background, I just left myself a little bit of white canvas open so that I don't lose their position. But I suppose it wasn't really that necessary. All right, so now I do need a rigger brush because I need to do like really long fine lines. How can I show you? Like that. So just a, a nice fine rigger brush. And if I see those um, colors there, we should be able to steal some yellow, some of the light yellow, and work it into the into this raw umbery mixture. Where is the palette? Let's get him down there. So I've taken some of that yellow into this raw umbery area over here, and that's given just like a light, a light brownie color. And lots of medium. You want it thin as an ink. Let's use this brush again for a, a mild stick. And don't have too little paint on your brush, otherwise there's no paint that can flow off the off the brush. And now I'm going to use just some of that. While we're at it, I'll just use some of that neat yellow. So all I've done is just got the shape of it. Now you can come in and you can decide how much detail you want to put in. I'm going to add just a few little dabs and dashes like that. Just to get that idea of the shape. A little bit broader on the top. Same over here. Because it is a bit of a, almost like a zebra effect on that and then over there. There's that little highlight over there. And then there's a few little darker patches. For that I'll use neat raw umber. You can see it mostly over there. A few little marks, zebra marks along there. And that's good enough. Stand back again. And there you go. Nice and the important thing is to get those guys nice and thin. There we go. I think we'll call it a day on this one. Look how beautiful those flowers and stuff look with the dark background around it. So now just imagine all of this is dark as well. It's going to look absolutely awesome. So let's see. Let's just do a quick adjust on the other camera quickly. Sorry for the shakes. And we can go to... We can go to there. Alrighty, I think you've got enough info now and, and enough practice to do the, the last flower on your own. I've got no doubt that you'll, you'll handle that without any hassles. 
um, if I move this over here, then I can see what's, what's being broadcast and I can see what you're saying in the chat box. Alrighty, um, I hope you enjoyed today's class. Um, good luck with your other flower. I know you're going to do a great job. Please post your uh, your picture for me either on the on the page on the website or on on the Facebook page. Um, if you are a patron, then you can get access to the edited version of this class afterwards. So I'll speed up. I'll do a little bit of a, a speed up of me doing the last flower so you can see how I do that as well over there. And then don't forget with um, when I when I upload the edited version of the class onto the website, don't forget to go and re-download your reference PDF because I add the uh, the final painting to that reference PDF so that you can work from that as well while you're painting. So from my side, you have an awesome week. I'll see you next week. Next week we are going to draw some straight straight hair. So we're going to do like a, a, a bit of a plaited hair. It's going to be quite interesting. Looking forward to that one. I'll see you next time. Alrighty. So you guys in the in the live class, if you do have questions, go ahead. I'm happy to answer them. So Camus is asking if we can have a lesson on the palette knife painting. Absolutely. I love painting with a palette knife. It's one of my favorite ways to paint. So on the website, there are some palette knife ones already. Camus, go and take a look at, I'll tell you now, they've mostly been painted in oil. So let's go to the find a class page. Maybe I can, I can show you what I'm doing. Then you know what I'm doing. Let's go to, okay, so let's go to, let's go to the home page. So when you're logged in, you've now got this, right? So let's go oil painting. Let's take a look. We've got the impasto rocks is a knife painting. Uh, this one over here, the Olive Grove, he's a knife painting. Sorry, I know I'm going a bit quick. The Abstract Sunset, there's a bit of knife work in there. The Flower Pot over here, he's also a, a knife painting. Abstract Skyline is a knife painting. And let's see. Yeah, the flowers in a meadow is a knife painting. So there are a few already. So you're welcome to go and... Yeah, I think that's that, that, that's all the knife paintings. I do want to do some more because I, I really enjoy the knife painting. So you can take a look at those ones in, in the meantime, Camlesh. Yeah, Robin, go for it. When you when you discover your when you discover your brushes, good luck. Yeah, the flower pot was quite a good lesson to do. Everybody seemed to enjoy that one for some reason. I, I enjoyed it anyway. What's nice about the knife is that it you 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 um you have to simplify stuff. There's no fine detail with a knife. Well, less fine detail with a knife. Herman is asking, would I paint oils in a dark canvas? You can, but I'm not a fan, and I'm going to tell you why. Oils, even though they are opaque colors, they still tend to be transparent. So you never get it as vibrant as, as what you do. Like, for example, over here, this painting is going to look beautifully vibrant because the the colors are still 
slightly transparent so what happens is the light actually comes through the through the paint hits the white canvas at the back bounces back and that gives you that beautiful luminant effect in the paint um with acrylic however yes go ahead um, acrylics are a lot more opaque than the than the oils are so there I'm, I'm happy painting on a black canvas and you'll because you can layer over them so quickly and easily you get beautiful bright vibrant effects even on a black canvas but with the oils no i'd rather paint my own background and i'll I'd usually paint the background afterwards like i have done here when possible And then Robin is saying, um, I'd love to see some more loose style paintings. Yeah, yeah. I also battle. I also tend to get stuck in the details, I must admit. You can see most of my paintings are quite realistic. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll definitely add some more more looser paintings and and with a knife that that's really when i like to get loose because you can't do detail so that that's i think that's why i like the knife because that gives me that opportunity to work more loose yeah great suggestions guys thank you i'll definitely do that adam go ahead and give this a bash in acrylics i, I know you can do it but if you have oils, give it a bash in oils as well. And then you can you can see the difference between the two. And don't forget to check out that um, uh, girl with pearl earring class. There I, I show nicely how to do the the layering. In actual fact, I've got another class where I show that we can get to it even quicker instead of having to watch the whole class. Let's go back to the website. And I'm going to quickly just jump back to the top and let's take, let's get rid of the oil classes and let's just show acrylic. No. Um, yeah, I suppose acrylic. There's a feedback here. This acrylic painting feedback class over here, where it says shading, reflections, and dugs. In that one, I was showing bull. Bill was battling with these with these shadings, so I, I I did an extra special little video to show him how to do that and how to get his shadings nice and smooth. So go and take a look at that. So that'll definitely yeah, that's the perfect class because you, then you won't have to go through a whole a whole painting painting session. Well, that's a good painting class. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm not seeing any new classes coming through, so I think let's call it a day. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson, guys. Um, have a great weekend. I'll see you next week.